thumbs up and says recording. Okay, got it. Um, so Elizabeth, I was thinking, do you want me, you know, we let folks know that it takes a lot of money to fund research. You want me to bring that up to the beginning? No, just no. let's do it the way we have it now. I just have, have a now. feeling people- It's the, the people beginning like, of the year. They're like freaking, hey man, I've given enough to you. Jeez. Wow. You know? Okay. Like, oh my God, stop asking me for money. I just Well, gave. I was just thinking we'd take Maddie's like checking account. <laughs> she can give the number and then people can just deposit money right into there. <laughs> well, if that's the case, right. I'd be up for that. Okay. All right, Lizzo, you ready? <laughs> Come on, laugh, Maddie. <laughs> Jeez, oh my God. She's going to disconnect. No, I better shut up. Yes, you better. Okay, so as you know, listen, go have prior... another cigarette. Your your voice there. I don't smoke. You're I sick. know. I always tell her she's got that like. I don't have a smoker's laugh. Smoker's laugh. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Elizabeth. It's asthma. Yeah, sure it is. Okay. Are you ready? No, okay. stop it. Let's go. We only have so much time. Okay, let's, let's go. go. Well, I have all day. Yeah, I know. Okay. And neither does Maddie. She's probably studying. So she's probably like, get me off this call phone call. Right. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Hello, everyone. This is Chris and Lizzo. We are a brother sister team. And Let's start off. Can, can we start that show? over? Stop. I'm just like, bleh, bleh. Mark, keep that in there. Okay. No, One, don't. Let's just start two, over. Two, three. Hello, everyone. This is Chris and Lizzo. We are a brother-sister team. And on behalf of the Sharko Marie Tooth Association, a.k.a. CMTA, we are coming at you. Coming at you from coast to coast. I live in California and Chris lives in snowy Vermont. Yes. And this is another episode of our podcast name. What, Lizzo? CMT for me. CMT, the number four, me. And that's right. CMT for me a community-focused podcast dedicated to those with CMT, giving them a voice in the community to share their stories, good or bad, successes, challenges, and much, much more. And with that, we are starting 2023 off with a bang, Liz. Happy New Year, 2023. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, okay, you... listeners, she's pretty fired up. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell. Have you made any New Year resolutions, Chris? Uh, you know, the New Year is just another day from my perspective. However, I was thinking maybe I'll do more skiing and cycling. What do you think, Lizzo? I don't get enough of these activities. You do that like every day. Oh, okay. Can't well, you come up with something unique? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. No. Well, I, th I kind of agree with you that resolutions are just kind of lame. Yeah. But when I started thinking about it, you know, like why wait to the first, but I'm kind of falling into that now. And I'm just trying to learn new, a new dance move once a week and trying to find fame on Instagram. Oh my goodness. That's my resolution. Wow. So, you know, That's I hope great. I, I guess me. I will disconnect from you on Instagram. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, actually, you know what I was thinking is I was what? down in the uh, basement of the house and I bought this guitar a few years ago. And I used to play when I was little. And I said, you know what? Maybe this year I'll spend some time learning guitar and the drums. And boy, my wife Mia is going to love it when I'm banging on those drums at 11 at night during the week. I think you should do that. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Well, when does Lila graduate, Chris? In May sometime, right? From the University of Virginia? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm Towards attending that graduation. That'll be May. awesome. It's going to be yep. really, really fun. I, I know. I just can't believe it. Now, Lizzo, before you go to a graduation, don't embarrass yourself by speaking the wrong terms. A few things to remember at UVA. OK, so what do listen you mean, up. embarrass myself? I don't here, care what people here think. we go. I've done it a million times. I'm still learning. Oh, okay? you get a hard time. Now, Lila is a fourth year. You don't say she's a senior. She's a fourth year. OK, OK. And when we're walking you don't say, let's go out on the campus. It's called, it's grounds, okay? Is that and really important? It's very important. Yeah, you might get beat up if you say the wrong <laughs> wrong word. So I've come close. <laughs> and it's wahoo wah, okay? What's a wahoo wah, wah wah? Well, that's an alternative name for the Cavaliers, right? Or the students, it, it, you know, 
They're at called University Wahoo of Virginia. Waz? Yeah. You used to, I know you usually go woohoo, but it's not <laughs> woohoo. It's wahoo wah. Okay. And this is going to fit right in with today's guest speaker, correct? Yeah, because did you know that today's guest is studying at the University of Virginia too? She's doing her graduate work at the law school. And it's a really, really highly rated law school. That are we interviewing Maddie Brown today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. And there look at go. I'm all prepared. Look at what I have on. I've got my UVA hat, my winter hat. I've got my UVA t-shirt. Go calves. I'm all fired up. And now we have Maddie. All right. Hey, you know, I met Maddie quite a long time ago. I'm not sure. I think the first time was at a youth outing with the CMTA in Florida. And then I had lunch with her once with her sister and her dad who came to the area. But she, she's gone through so much in her life with CMT, but you wouldn't know it from talking with her, right? She had scoliosis yeah. surgery. Then during that school, and that's that's a lot of nuts and bolts and screws and back braces. And then she had bilateral foot surgery. Then she went to high school and got Helios braces, walking around with those braces with her back straight and more surgery on her toes. It's unbelievable. That's pretty, pretty impressive, right? On top of that, despite all of these challenges, and correct me if I'm wrong, but she landed an internship at the private office of Barack and Mich Michelle. Did I say that correct? Barack and Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. And got another internship and then job at Barack Obama Foundation. I think she still works for them virtually. Also being campus leader and president of Students Against Sexual Assault is at GWU, choosing University of Virginia School of Law. And today she's navigating law school with CMT. Pretty impressive. So Maddie- Woo. One question. Wahoo, wah. we, yeah, wahoo, wah. In <laughs> terms of UVA, how would the, are you considered a seventh year or an eighth year? Or what is it now? So we, do we it, call you an octo? Yeah. What do we call? <laughs> I don't know. I actually haven't thought about. I have been in school an alarming amount of time, but <laughs> right. in terms in terms of law school, I am a second year in law school oh, or okay. a 2L. Okay. So I'm officially halfway through. All right. Cool. Now listen, Lizzo. Great introduction to Maddie, right? What do you think? I think so too. What do you think, Maddie? I think, you know, you covered the major strokes. Okay. <laughs> but it's it's nice to meet everyone. Hi. Yes, yeah, great. Hi, Maddie. And thanks, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're very, very busy. So let's get, out, get down to the nitty gritty because you said we covered the major strokes, but now we want the minor ones. We want all the details to fill all that in. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm originally from outside of Rochester, New York. I was uh, diagnosed with scoliosis at the age of three. And for nine years after that, I wore a back brace. I was unaware of having any CMT symptoms, though, in hindsight, they were all very obvious once I was getting the CMT diagnosis. Um, and then when I turned 12, I got a major back surgery to include uh, rods and screws into my spine. And that kind of felt like that was going to be the end of all of my doctor's appointments and health problems. And I was going to go into being a teenager um, normal, quote unquote. Right. And when I was going through all of the tests and processes to get the back surgery, that's when they discovered that I had CMT. I have 4C. No one else in my family or no one else in my family's memory had CMT. So it was kind of just the unlucky stroke of the gene luck yeah. uh, is how I ended Ugh. up there. Right. And uh, kind of since then, I've been um going through various uh, surgeries and braces to kind of help um, me navigate the world with CMT. But I do, um, I still can walk around with leg braces. And that's usually, that's the main um, mode of um, help that I use with my own disability. So, so I, I have no, a question no, first. Chris, Chris, question. Chris, Chris, so, Chris. Okay. No, let me ask mine first. Okay, so, go ahead. So you referenced a lot of this going on at the age of 12. Right. Mm -hmm. So just as you're about to go into high school and what I recall, uh, you made a few references when we did our pre-interview that I think you said something like high school, you know, your first year in high school was like the worst time of your life with all this stuff going on. So would you mind telling us, our listeners and us a little bit about that experience, what you were going through at that time? Yeah, definitely. So I had 
at the age of 12, like I said, I got the diagnosis and pretty quickly after that, I started to decline rapidly. Until then, I could basically walk without um, a lot of help and I didn't really notice. I didn't have stair problems, but after I got the spinal fusion surgery, it was a very rapid decline of my feet kind of turning over. And so by the time that I got out of eighth grade and going in between eighth grade and ninth grade, I got a foot surgery, but that foot Mm. surgery happened about two weeks before high school started, which meant that I started high school in a wheelchair with kind of double casts on, which was... Oh, you didn't stand out at all, did you? No. Definitely not at all. It was definitely, (laughs) as, as I said, one of the hardest parts of my entire life because being 14 is already angsty enough um right. and like being such a a sight walking in or being rolled in by my dad to the high school was yeah. uh quite quite the experience but i feel feel like the hardest part of all of that was just that i feel like it set me back on my ability to feel comfortable in my own skin because i was so out of control at that time of my life of what was happening and so it was just a very difficult time because you, I eventually did get out of the wheelchair and walked with a kind of a walking boot for a while. Mm. And then um, there was a brief amount of time where I wasn't wearing braces in high school at all, which was a mistake. I should have just went into the braces immediately, but you live and you learn. But that entire kind of period of my life was just very difficult because it felt like I didn't want to open up to anyone about what was happening in my own life because I didn't want to be seen as othered, but also grappling with the fact that everyone still knew who I was because either Mm. the wheelchair caught their eye or the, my walking gait caught their eye. And so kind of being known by everyone, but no one actually knowing me was definitely the hardest part of high school. And I definitely feel for anyone else going through that because it's such a formative time of your life. And having that to grapple with as well um, is, is very difficult. Maddie, what were your coping skills since you didn't talk to people about your CMT um, very often? I don't know how your family supported you if you had internal dialogues there, but what were your coping skills? I mean, some people go to drugs or alcohol or some people get obsessive about certain things. What were your coping skills? Right. So sure. let me just jump in. So I, yeah. I'd like to ask a question here. Um, what were your coping skills? <laughs> Idiot. It's much better when it comes from me, right? So that's great. So yeah. So please, please tell me what your coping so skills silly. were about it. Sure. So I would say while I wasn't open about it to kind of the general student body or anything, I did have a close group of friends that knew and supported me and knew what was going on. And my family has always been really amazing with kind of dealing with it all um, ever since I got the diagnosis. So I would say I still like turned into my inner circles. They weren't as big as maybe, you know, the whole school community could have been had I been more open uh, with the fact, but I still definitely like relied on uh, my own personal circles to kind of um, guide me through it. And just being surrounded by people who understood and didn't make me feel bad about not being able to do things that they wanted to do. I like my friends never suggested that we go on a hike or something yeah, right. uh, just because that was just, especially at that time when I wasn't wearing braces, just something that was completely off the table for me. They were always willing to do activities that I could be a part of. And the same goes to more of my family. I'd also say that I got some jobs in high school that I really enjoyed and helped me feel like I was staying active and moving, but didn't require, you know, any heavy lifting or anything. I worked at a pizza shop as a counter girl. And then I was also a pharmacist technician at a pharmacy. So I felt like those kind of jobs were, um, they were good for someone like me because it did require me to stay up on my feet all day and kept me staying active and not just kind of sitting um, at home in my room alone, not moving. Um, But at the same time, they were they were jobs that I could still do within my own physical capability. Yeah. What were your internal dialogues, though? Like, you know, you have these coping, you know, things with family and they're supportive. But and if you don't feel comfortable, don't don't answer. But, you know, like I just think of myself, I'm very um, kind of catastrophic thinking. I have a lot of anxiety. So that might you that might not speak to you. But like 
everyone has internal dialogues and I'm just wondering mm-hmm. what those were and how you combated the scarier yeah, things. Definitely. Definitely. I feel like it definitely got better as I got older. Certainly at the age of 12 through 14, I thought my life was absolutely over. And like, mm-hmm. I was never going to be able to do anything. I was never going to leave home. I was never going to be able to go to college. And I, like I said, I, those were really dark times of my life just because all of the like general angst of being a younger, um, like teenager, and then having this kind of just being told like, you know, it's going to get worse, <laughs> like over time, like mm-hmm. it, there's no care and it's never going to get better was very, very, very hard to deal with from the age of 12 to 14. I feel like after, like I, I said, I started to kind of get out of um, that kind of thought spiral was by, you know, distracting myself with my friends and my uh, jobs and and stuff. And I started to think about how I, I was a lot of future thinking of maybe I wasn't thinking about my life 10 years from now, but I was like, like college will come and I can kind of escape this cycle and this kind of group of people who's known me my whole life and has kind of watched me go through all of this. I can find new people who will just know me immediately and we can start kind of a new perception of who I am. Um, and I think that was also really helpful is thinking that as, as hard as those years were of my life, I knew that high school was never going to last forever. And kind of um, pushing forward on that kind of thought is what helped me a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and that's something I wrote down because you did reference that, that you you commented prior that high school is not going to last forever, right? So they gave you some hope going forward. And then it just sounds like, right, friends and family are so important, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um, and that's been pretty common in a lot of interviews, right? People really relying upon their family and friends. And, and, uh, and that seems like that's, you know, helps a lot of folks get through those stages. So one thing you've referenced as well was um, braces and not wearing braces. And in hindsight, you should have like, tell, tell me a little bit about that. Why didn't you want to wear braces? Yeah, definitely. So I uh, got my first <laughs> surgery at 14. I recovered from it. It's definitely though, since I had the back surgery, I was never able to walk like I was uh, pre the back surgery. So that foot surgery did definitely help. And it kind of staved off any major symptoms for about a year. But after that, it just got really bad I would wear like store ankle bracelets like Mm. or like the black ones that you'd wrap around and then I was always wearing Ugg boots which I just cringe about thinking about at this at this moment because I had to have the I had to have as much support as I possibly could on my ankles and there's no support with those boots no no but it was (laughs) it was better than your regular sneaker um and I did that just because I had always especially at that time been like I really just want to blend in I don't want to be looked at and I just felt that if I had leg braces on that, I like, that's all anyone would ever see from me. And so in my stubborn teenage years, I definitely held off way longer than I should have with not wearing braces, just because I have pretty bad um, hammer toes. Mm -hmm. And they are the constant reason why I'm tripping all the time if I'm not wearing braces. And so by the time of my junior year of high school, it was like a good week if I didn't trip over my toe, which is also, you know, a bad thing, especially with my CMT is I can't stand up without holding on to anything. So if I'm tripping and I'm have nowhere to grab onto, I can't stand back up. So it eventually got to the point where I was like, you're actively harming your quality of life. And like, you need to just like grow up and wear the leg braces. (laughs) Um, And like I said, I wish I I wish I had just done it immediately at 14. Because I feel like it would have been a lot easier just on my muscles and kind of my ability to keep up with people. But ultimately, I'm so happy that I did decide to get braces because I would absolutely be nowhere without uh, those leg braces. Those leg braces do basically everything for me and why I can continue to kind of lead an independent life and live away from home or without people who are directly around to assist me all the time. And it's completely because of leg braces. So yeah. we got so there eventually. It's awesome. And, and you're making me think about something else. But a question I have is, 
so your parents at this time, did they basically give you the freedom to, if you want to wear the braces, wear them, if you don't, don't, or was it one of those things like you walked out of the house to school with braces, you had your Uggs in your backpack. And as soon as you got <laughs> let, let off, you took the braces off and shoved your Uggs on and went at the class. No, I think my, my parents <laughs> were, they would have loved if I wore the braces, they would have loved it, but they never, ever pushed me into doing anything. They always kind of Good. respected my own kind of processing of having CMT. I think that also might be because no one else in the family has CMT. It might've been a different story if, um, it was one of it was the kind where almost everyone in the family gets it, but because I was the only one, I think you know I feel like I think part of them felt guilty for what happened, even mm. though it's not anyone's fault. But I think that there was a lot of kind of how could this possibly happen, mm -hmm. and I think they were really generous in kind of letting me deal for a decade very angstily <laughs> with how to uh, kind of process the the realization that like you do have a chronic illness and it's something that you're, it's not life ending, but it's certainly life changing. And they've always been kind of very supportive in my um, kind of processing of that information, even yeah. though I know wholeheartedly they would have, if they would have forced me embraces, if they, they had the opportunity. To. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they sound awesome. I mean, no, to they be are. able to support you like that because that's not only for yourself, but as a parent, right. You want to do everything for your kids. And um, I, I, that's you great. feel kind of powerless as a parent. You do. I tell you, yeah. you just, you know, do what you can. So I was wondering, Maddie, do you have a story for us? And this is, I'm just popping this on you, but like a story when you fell and you couldn't get up or something like that, that was really, you know, like I was, when we were talking to Bethany Malash, she said, she just is afraid of crossing the road. And yeah. I was there with her one day where she just tripped and she's in the middle of the road and mm -hmm. cars are waiting and it's just really hard. And how do you deal with those kind of things? Mm -hmm. I, so that's funny that you brought up Bethany because I was actually going to um, kind of speak to that. I've always loved hearing her talk about her own CMT journey. And I remember years ago, I had heard her talk about that exact thing, the falling in the street. And when I was younger at that time, that isn't something that had entirely crossed my mind because I didn't at the time do a lot of walking on the street, especially without people around me. But then when I moved to George Washington in Washington, D.C., I was city walking all of the time. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like um, one of those falls in the middle of the street, I remember it was right in the middle of a huge intersection it was, oh. I had tripped over my boot. I was trying to wear these new boots. It was going okay. And then it wasn't. And I remember in that moment thinking about, I remember falling to the ground and I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like the thing right. that like, like I've been thinking about um, for so long, I can't believe it actually finally happened. Very luckily for me, there were plenty of people in the crosswalk that were able to help me up and get me across the street and it was definitely I feel a pretty low point of living in the city because I felt like I was I can't live here if this is going to keep happening and it was so scary that it had happened once um and you know I had a whole little meltdown about it and sure. I remember I had had plans with my student organization later that night and I was like I'm not gonna go like I can't like pull myself together after this but with a some deep breaths and like talking to people it was like unfortunately we just we live the kind of life where like you fall down and you have to keep getting back up you mm -hmm. know I couldn't let that that one major fall in the middle of the street kind of um blow up my whole life and schedule and I feel like you know letting those falls kind of roll off your back is definitely just takes time and practice I can't like imagine what that would have done to me when I was like at 14 but at that point I had already had several embarrassing falls in my life that I was like, as like hard as it was in that moment to be like, this is the worst fear coming true. And I can't believe it actually happened. By that time I had like developed enough resilience to be like, okay, you can have your little meltdown about it, but then it's time. Like you just have to stand back up and keep moving forward. It's sort of a metaphor for That's life great. in general, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How so do you Maddie, explain, go ahead, Chris. I was just thinking so, how resilient Maddie is 
And resiliency is the key to a happy and successful life. And you're an extremely resilient young woman. And I'm just so proud of you, just listening to you, how you've gone through all these challenges and you're overcoming barrier after barrier after barrier. Yeah, you keep going. Phenomenal. Right? That's excellent. Phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Thank you. That word runs in our family because I said it when I was <laughs> interviewed on television once. And I, you know, one of those things you get interviewed for yeah. 30 seconds on television. And I think I said phenomenal like, like 50 10 times. times and I never <laughs> use that word in my vocabulary. I'm just like watching myself. I'm like, oh my God, what an idiot. He's I'm like, oh, it was phenomenal. The snows are phenomenal. Phenom oh, the phenomenal <laughs> snow. It's just a phenomenal day. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what my own family picks out of this podcast oh, that's great. and, and no, that's drags good. me for. Right. Uh, there's not so, much. You are so well-spoken. So uh, just a question I have is um, growing up, right? And I assume even today, right? How do you handle or what are the, what, what's the environment like when you're meeting new people? Do you find people ask you questions? Hey, Maddie, you know, what, what is there something you have? Or do you just break the ice and say, hey, you might be wondering, you know, this is what I have. How do you handle that? Because I assume over your years, you've had people ask you a lot of questions or people just stare and you're, you know, so how, how do people navigate through that? What's your response? Yeah, I, so I have found that I generally don't get asked a lot of direct questions okay. and depending on the situation. A lot of times I feel like people are afraid of offending. And mm -hmm. so they'll just, as you True. said, stare and kind of look and ponder what could possibly happening. But a lot of people, I feel like, especially um, in college, kind of 18 year old time, and then also going into law school, they don't necessarily verbalize their questions. So for the people who have directly verbalized it, I have no problem um, kind of expressing uh, what's going on a lot of people usually come at it from with me specifically they'll be like why are you limping sure. and I just always I just kind of always like joke it off like oh I'm always like that you know what I mean right. like yeah. like it's not a it's not a short-term thing but for the people who don't ask and for the people who uh, it's not like something I just go around announcing in the the big hallway of the law school but uh for the people that need to know i definitely um, have no problem just telling them because most of the time when you explain to people what's wrong um they're incredibly generous and accommodating and you know you're, you're never going to have the perfect response from people and right. some people don't give you the response that you want but for the most part i find that just telling people is a lot easier than having them guess and kind of ask well oh what's up with her um it's a lot easier to just start off the bat of okay if we're going somewhere can we take the elevator you know yeah. things like that have just made I feel like interactions with meeting new people so much easier and um something that I I, I appreciate that I've started to do more um especially since I left high school I feel like I've been fairly open with all the new people I meet that I do have um some physical limitations if we're going to go out and do something and I've you know, generally been met with pretty positive responses. Yeah. Okay, yeah. role play. Let's role play. Let's role play. Okay. okay. Here we go. Hey, Maddie, I've noticed that you kind of limp and you have a hard time holding things. Like, what's up with that? Like, what what's going on? I was just wondering because my brother has a thing. I was wondering if it was the same thing. Yeah. So I have Charlotte Marie tooth disease, which is wait, wait, you have what you have? What I know, I, I know, do, right? I do I love, mean... I do love throwing in the Charlotte Marie tooth because people are usually like, is that a dental problem? Wait, yeah, we're, exactly. we're still role playing. Is that a dental problem? <laughs> no, it's actually a neuromuscular problem. Oh. Um, so I have a kind of progressive neuromuscular disease that slowly um, eats away at the nerves in my hands and feet. So I just use leg braces to help me um get through life and i love an elevator over the stairs <laughs> that's oh. usually just my just my right, little right pitch. that's a great way to explain mm. it it was short sweet and to the point yeah and then mm -hmm. you're just like oh man anyone can ask follow-up questions all they want but um it's usually if you just leave it at that people are normally like oh okay i, I get it even yeah. if i don't understand 
what the heck a Charcot Marie Tooth is. Um, they basically can get it from that. <laughs> Absolutely. That was wonderful. That was really, really good. <clears throat> That's the elevator pitch. The right elevator there. pitch. <laughs> Literally or speech. And that's, <laughs> seriously, that's great. That's right. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, so why law? Why are you studying law? Yeah. What kind of law? Are you going to sue me after this podcast? I know. Absolutely and I, not. <laughs> I think you meant, is it trans, transactional law? Yeah. So I'll be doing more transactional and regulatory work. I'm going to be at a law firm that is based in London. So they're going to do a lot of work uh, bringing European uh, and Asian businesses into the United States market. So my role kind of in the, as a United States attorney in that law firm will be helping them move through the regulation and different agencies and federal or state governments uh, will essentially be my big, um, will essentially be my role in that. Uh, why law specifically? Uh, my grandmother is an attorney or was an attorney and my mother is currently an attorney. So I was always kind of surrounded mm -hmm. by strong women in the law and I was always really inspired by seeing them get up and go to work every day uh, at the office. I've always liked arguing and reading and writing <laughs> and so it felt like it was a good it was a good um, way to kind of use those skills and also more practically I feel like I thought about what jobs I could potentially have longevity in because yeah, you never know how CMT will progress and affect you. And I figured that working in an office, having my degree solidified in my career kind of in motion that should things, you know, kind of spin out in a way that I don't necessarily want to happen, um, that I will have some kind of job security and skills um, and be able to keep working should things kind of um just progress quicker than I right. hope that they do. Yeah. And what type of law does your mom practice? And what did your grandmother practice? Sure. Yeah. My grandma did healthcare work. Okay. Um, so she worked with a lot of insurance companies and their clients. And then my mom does commercial real estate transactions. Okay. Oh, so and they were both all different. Yeah. They were both uh, based in Rochester. Okay. So we're safe, Lizzo. They're not like Ooh, yeah. prosecutors. You're or good. Something. Yeah, You're I'm good. never going to be good. bringing good. businesses Whew. over no. from uh, Europe or yeah. <laughs> China. Or Will you be going else. to London, Maddie? I hope so. I That'll hope be so. cool. That, huh? that was always, I feel like in another life, I would have wanted to spend a good chunk of time in London just because I've, I've always really liked traveling and I feel like being able to do it in a job sense will be kind of that dream coming true a little well, you bit. You can always so. stay with Bethany. She has an extra guest room. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. does. I'll, I'll let her know personally that you invited exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. She'll listen to this. She'll Open be like, invite. whatever. And do you travel? I, I, can't re I can't recall which episode it was. Um, oh, sorry. But if you need to practice like a British accent in one of the podcasts, I spoke in a British accent. So that can really really help you if All you right. do yeah. journey to the UK. Yeah. I, yeah. And actually the couple of those podcasts, he speaks with a British accent. So yeah, I think so you could pick really up good. a lot from yeah. his, <laughs> his work, but I'm wondering, um, have you traveled extensively or do you hope to travel extensively or? I definitely hope to travel extensively. I've been able to do some fun trips Definitely with the help of my dad. <laughs> if yeah. I didn't have my dad there dragging me along, I don't think I was able to do it. I think one of my biggest traveling kind of moments was walking the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, Scotland from the top of the castle all the way to the bottom and then almost all the way back up back to our hotel. Wow. I can't even tell you how bad my legs hurt the next day, but it was worth it in that kind of experience of just kind of getting to go on the major walks because my sister and dad you know gets I forget what the big mountain outside of the city is called but they get to walk up all of that but I was still like well I got to walk the Royal Mile good for and I you was, I was That's proud awesome. about that so I hope to do more traveling in the future particularly cities that have a lot of good public transit I'm yeah. excited mm -hmm. because I feel like that'll be very helpful for me um, not, not necessarily relying on the long distance walking, but if I can, you know, take a train from place to place, uh, yeah. that's what I hope to do soon. Do you hope to live in DC? Is that where your yes. goal is? Yeah. That's yes. a great, yeah. that's a pretty, um, disabled friendly environment. Yeah, there are a lot of, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I found on the East Coast, it's one of the easiest cities for me personally to navigate. I really, really wanted to find a law firm job in DC because I knew if I had to live in New York City, I would do it, but that it would be a much larger struggle. Um, so I'm really happy that I've ended up in DC because I felt really comfortable the four years that I lived there in undergrad. Good. So don't, Maddie, do you don't, have any- Wait, Chris, I don't, don't come to San Francisco. The other day, yeah. we went to San Francisco to the Exploratorium and I looked and I actually have a picture of this. There was a parking place and the handicap sign was in the middle of the parking spot. So no one could park there. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, like, no. What the heck? Really? Uh, no, yeah. I and it makes picture. me so sad because I love San Francisco. Yeah. I love San Francisco. It is not a CMT friendly Not city. at all. <laughs> Not but I do all. love San Francisco. Go Giants. <laughs> yeah. So, Maddie, do you interact or um, with other individuals that have CMT? Like, do you have any friends that have CMT or do you listen or go to any support groups or anything like that? I'm just curious. Yeah, so I don't have any direct friends that I keep in contact with CMT, but all of the kind of interactions that I've had with other people have mostly been through the CMTA. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that I was at the Orlando thing, and I feel like that was one of the most um, more, most comfortable times I've ever felt in my life. Is There was a big group of us walking around. I don't remember which park, but one of yeah. the parks for 10 hours straight. It was and long. <laughs> honestly, if you had told me, if you had told me that at that mm. time, I don't think I was wearing braces then that I was going to make it around Walt Disney for 10 hours straight without any, I, my sister was with me, but without my parents, um, I don't think I would have believed you. And I feel like it was because I, I don't know what possessed us that day, but it felt like all of us had like a lot of energy kind of working off of each other. And it was a really great experience to kind of be surrounded by people who, you know, go at your pace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that Julie Barron was there and then oh, Jonah was? and I think Bethany was there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a great group of individuals, right? So to bond with. Mm -hmm. So much fun. So Maddie, what would you say to someone, um, let's say newly diagnosed with CMT, right? That's maybe in their early teens and, you know, they're saying, oh my God, I just got diagnosed with CMT. My life is over. I don't know what to do. This is the worst thing. I'm going to just, how would you coach that person? Mm -hmm. So I would say to someone who is recently diagnosed, particularly someone who's younger, that it's okay to go at your own pace in processing that information. I feel like with hindsight, older me is, thinking about how, oh, I should have done this, or I should have been like this. And I mean, that those kind of thought processes only go so far, because at the same time, I want to extend sympathy to my younger self, who was kind of facing such a life changing bout of information. And, you know, there are so many inspiring young people and leaders um, in this community and communities in general. But it's okay. I would tell them if you are not quite there yet, I would encourage you to be gentle with yourself and understand that acceptance isn't going to be a straight line. It, you know, has the potential to take several years, but that, you know, the people who are around you, whether it be your friends, family, or the greater CMTA community uh, is there for you and kind of processing that information. And in saying that, I would also say that you also can't let it completely drown your life forever. You you do need to eventually kind of push forward. And if you have, you know, kind of cultivated those support pockets in your life, those are the people who can help push you forward and keep you on that road to acceptance and kind of, you know, your whole life isn't going to be CMT. I know it feels like it especially when you get first diagnosed, it feels like this is the only thing that you'll ever be known for, or remembered for, or people will ever think about you for. And it's just not true. And it's okay if you don't necessarily believe that now, but I promise you will in the future. And that there will be a day where you, you know, want to like push forward yourself. And I encourage you to do that. And I encourage you to be brave. There are so many things in my life that I would have missed out on if I had you know, continue to be afraid 
and not wanting to move forward. And so I'm, you know, grateful to my past self for, you know, taking the time that I needed to process all that information, but uh, who also knew when it was time to push forward and move, move on with my life. So I would say that's my greatest piece of information and always rely on the people around you and the greater CMT community at large, because we all know what you're going through. That is an incredible response. Oof. I mean, oh my God, you are like a natural born leader. And uh, you are, you seriously, are. you just have, uh, you're just like Elizabeth said, or Lizzo said, you're very well spoken, um, very thoughtful. Uh, just, it's great in terms of that response. And, you know, something to think about in the future, you have a lot of ways to give back to those with CMT, right? Just I was through your experiences just... and how you express yourself. It's I amazing. was just going to say that, Maddie. I was. I'm hoping once you get through school and you get established, that you will look back at the CMT because you have so much to offer people that are struggling today, and you have a way about you that people will listen. It's totally. a gift. So thank you, <clears throat> Lizzo. Thank you. You had a few fun questions. I think, <laughs> we do have some fun questions ask, from right? Maddie. Yeah. Do you think now's the time? Yeah, I do. Uh huh. Okay, go for it. So well, I'm going to ask one. You can ask the other one. Okay. Okay. So I'll start. So think about this and I'll give you an example. If you were a member of Congress, is there a law you would abolish or pass? For example, in Arizona, they passed a law prohibiting a sleeping donkey in your bathtub after 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and so that law I think was abolished, but it was because of some story. Then they, you know, some laws get passed, and then you know. So is there any on that was on a fun note, but on a serious note, or even a fun note, is there anything can you think of that you would abolish or pass? Sure. Yeah. So there are. I think the Americans with Disabilities Act is a wonderful first step in kind of uh, integrating. Uh, people with disabilities into society and kind of protecting them. I think that it doesn't have enough teeth to it and it is wildly under enforced. And so I feel like if I was a Congress person, that would be one of the major goals of mine is to kind of reform the ADA and make sure it is much more heavily implemented than it currently is. Sure. I feel like going to law school has really made me aware of the fact that there are a lot of amazing groundbreaking laws on the books but they are unfortunately very under enforced and so i feel like that would be one of the the big things that i would want to push um from the more serious side from the silly side i don't really know there are a lot of silly books uh, there are a lot of silly laws on the books let me tell you i learned in crim law that there's just you know, a lot's absolutely collecting dust that haven't been prosecuted in 60 years and are still somehow on the books. So probably cleaning up those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's a great, but I love, I love your, um, I love your first one that you said. That's, that was a great answer. Yeah. So here's <laughs> one job. other question. Lizzo came up with this one, but I'll ask you, I think it's cool. All right. So if the U.S. was carving a new Mount Rushmore, okay, new, which four figures would you want to be displayed there? This is a difficult question. It doesn't have to be. A, it doesn't have to be a president. It could be like from an artist. I mean, artist you could say or... you want Lizzo up there. Well, like I Chris, hope that you'd like, yeah. you know. <laughs> your dad. Right. <laughs> um. Let me think about it. Um. And even if it's just one that pops to your head, just a couple. One. Yeah. Just a couple. Okay. Yeah. Not just don't um, give her one, at least a couple. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to the editor. Just give me a second to think about it. No, it's all good. Um, Take your time. Hmm. These are always the scariest questions to get asked at interviews. These are always <laughs> like, you're always like, what do they want me to say? I know. Then your mind you know just goes I mean? blank, right? Like, who who is that? Who's a great, a great leader? Maybe um, Ruth Ginsburg or I would president. Get... Hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm being so slow. No, with this perfect. Answer.
Um, Take your time. They'll just edit this out. So it's it okay. Matter. It's okay. I'm so sorry. I just like, oh, I don't, don't worry. It's a hard question. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's not a lot of uh, like individuals personally that I venerate. Admire. So yeah. I'm just like, and I feel, I feel weird being like, oh, President Obama. Cause like, that's also my boss. But yeah. You can like, say that. That's a good <laughs> thing to say. That's a good thing to say. Um. I would say there are a lot of personal mentors okay. in my life that Perfect. if this was my own Rushmore yeah. that not everyone has okay. perceived right. Let's say your that own. I would put on. Um, so and maybe I, that's I, better I worded that. if it was your own yeah. Mount Rushmore, like your own could, in I your backyard, right? What <laughs> would you put I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to Perfect. cast everyone yeah. for the whole I nation, but in my own personal Mount Rushmore, there are people who I think have certainly changed the course of my life. Um, and are really important mentors in my life. The first being my parents. I don't know if those are two spots that I, I would oh, give them. I would give, give them, them one or two. Totally. I would give them one or two because like I had I had said before in that previous answer, their unwavering kind of support and love and uh, care that they've taken with me and having CMT is something that like I could never um, return the favor for. I'm so grateful. Um, for them for that. I would say I also had uh, an English literature professor in my first year of GW who just gave me so much confidence in my own kind of writing and reading ability and kind of wanting to pursue um, law school and that kind of thing. And may, he made me take up an extra major of the English uh, of the English major because I just appreciated his kind of perspective um on life and also just how much uh kind of care he devoted into my own personal development um and I would also say that my first boss at the um office of Barack and Michelle Obama um she was just an incredible mentor um from the uh kind of professional skills building perspective and also just uh a woman that I really admire who kind of like carved her own career and path and kind of did what she wanted with her life, which I find incredibly inspiring. So those, I didn't feel like I could keep going, but right. those, those, that's four great. Well, that's awesome. That's great. And my life have kind of, um, in my head, I would build a statue for them just to kind of mark what they've done for me in my life. I love that's how you fantastic. turned the question around in your own personal Mount Rushmore. I just think that's fabulous. But I like that. Yeah, I do I think too. It's fantastic, right? Those are the folks that really have had a big impact on your life, right? So that's it's fantastic. Beautiful. I'm still a um, little disappointed. You I didn't am say too. Chris and Lizzo, but me too. But that's you know, okay. I, you know I was just like, we can know. carve. We can carve a whole space for if we don't have just people. We can carve the CMTA logo. Okay, no, right that's wow. that's wow. not no. We're fighting no. for the cure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just as long as with Chris and Lizzo is in there somewhere. We'll just be tiny, Absolutely. tiny, like chiseled into the side. <laughs> right, right, like... in the, right in the sea. Yeah. Right in the yeah. sea. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Just as long. Yeah. Just like a scratching well, on a tree or something. Well, Lizzo, <laughs> we are running out of time as usual. These go by so quickly. Uh, and Maddie, just an incredible guest. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I can't wait till this one gets released. So, but uh, we just really a, appreciate your input. Just amazing. And I had chills when you were talking. Is there any, are there any last words you'd like to say, or have you kind of completed your podcast? Sure. I, I will definitely say if you couldn't, you know, glean this from my entire interview that I haven't necessarily been as involved as I would like to in the CMTA, but it's something that I want to change moving forward. So if you ever have any question for me or you just want to chat, my um, information can be made available um, by both of you um, to anyone who wants to know, or you can friend me on Facebook and send me a message. I have no um, issues with um, kind of keeping up contact with anyone who wants to. So um, I hope that you're all doing well. And uh, thank you for having me as a guest on this awesome. podcast. It was very fun. Oh, yeah, it was fun. It I can't was. wait to see where you go, what you do, and we will be in touch. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, you know, exactly. make sure to keep in touch and see where you go. You're going to do great. So, hey, Lizzo. Yes, If someone wants so. to learn more about CMT and or to donate to our cause, where should they go? CMTAUSA.org. There's so much information on this website. 
everything you want to know. You got it. Really, folks, go to the site. Save this as a bookmark. There's just ongoing information, just a library of incredible info for you. And you know, Lizzo, it does take a lot of money to fund research in order to find a cure for CMT. If someone was so inclined to donate to our cause generously, please go to cmtausa.org. And to all our listeners, do you have a good story? Would you like to tell your story on our CMT for Me podcast? If you do, write to us, info at cmtausa.org and pitch your idea. We do want to hear from you. You're right, Lizzo. I hear we have a new intern for our she's podcast awesome. and mm -hmm. she's doing a fabulous job with the materials we've, we've put you. Okay, <laughs> hold on, folks. Uh, Mark, got to just change it. So Lizzo, I hear we have a new intern for our podcast and she's doing a fabulous job. Her name is Ashley Feller, correct? Yes, she she is amazing. She has a lot of creative ideas. She's really made our Facebook uh, group or page, whatever mm. it is, uh, expand. And a lot of new. There's a lot of new interest. So thank you, Ashley. So why don't you all go to Facebook, look up CMT for Me podcast, and like or follow our page, and then you'll oh, get great. more and more clips and interviews of what we're doing. And Folks, don't forget to leave us a stellar review so we can reach more folks. One way to leave a review is to go to Apple Podcasts. And right. Yeah, you can listen to this C um, podcast on the CMT for Me podcast page, or it's a web page uh, that we have. And it's it's on. Um, yeah, I got to do that over again, uh, Mark. Sorry about that. So you can also listen to the podcast CMT for me on Apple podcasts and write us a review. Whew, That's what I wanted it. to say. She Woo got through it. So why is it important for people to write a review, Lizzo? Well, because it encourages more people to listen. We get more people to come in and tell their got stories it. and we're helping the whole CMT community. You got it. I love it. And that's a close later, sis. Wahoo. Wah. <laughs> Wahoo, Chris, and Toodaloo, Kangaroo. <laughs> Jeez. All right. All right, Maddie. That's it. Hey, oh, uh, here, let me stop. I, I did have a quick, no, don't stop the recording. I okay. did have a quick, it's pretty you're interesting awesome. thinking about the uh, stories and um, uh, grade school. So when I, we were talking about the braces and the Uggs and all those things. So I have this, you know, traumatic experience. So my mother, our mother, when I was in fourth grade, you know, it's like springtime <laughs> and it's 70 degrees outside. And because I had like allergies and asthma and all that stuff, and she was always worried about me, she made me wear a full snowsuit to school. Yeah. So I'm standing oh, there where everyone's like shedding their like coats and they're in <laughs> sleeves. And I'm just like up against the school in a full snowsuit with snow boots. And honestly, we lived right across the street from the school. So all he yeah. had to do was cross the road. Yeah, and he was, was like it. this, Seriously. just walking like this. So we're yeah. all like, <laughs> yeah, so it's true. It's true. I'll never forget that. Having oh, to walk gosh. across the street in a full snowsuit, yep. his hat, his boots. Yeah, in May. In May. Cool. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. I used to do it to myself because I'd walk around in Ugg boots and shorts in the middle of summer. Yeah. And it's like, girl, just put on like braces. Uh, it's going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be okay. All Thanks right, Maddie. Lot, Maddie. Well, listen, you were awesome. Yeah, very. That was great. Enjoy the rest of your time off. And uh, we wish you the best in your upcoming semester. And I think I'm going to be in the UVA area in March and then Alizzo and I'll be there again in May and maybe we'll have a chance to connect for a cup of coffee. Yeah, definitely. Be cool. Let me know. Let I me know will. If you're ever around. Okay. Right. Yeah. And thanks. I am so grateful for this interview. It really is just a really good interview and you were fabulous. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, thank you. I, I mean, I really appreciate it. Cause like I said, it's something that I've, you know, kind of been quiet about my whole life. And I feel like this is a big step for me for to you. kind of like push forward in that kind of feeling of like who I am and stuff. So awesome. thank you for the opportunity. Okay. I really All right. appreciate it. it. Good Lizzo, luck for the rest gonna... of the semester. Lizzo, you'll stop the recording. Yeah. Right? Okay. All right. Later, Maddie. See ya. Bye.